So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us. This will be a recorded session with Mike and I. Um, basically, this is going to be a 30 minute webinar about um, how hospitality can prosper through collaborations. So I'm with Mike Scully, so I'm very, very pleased to be with Mike. Just a couple of uh, things, make the most of the q and I've managed to get some really good q and of some key players in the Dubai hospitality and the UK hospitality market and brands that are looking to break into mega brands, so artists and designers. So we'll be trying to cover as much as possible with Mike. And um, yeah, so I'm really, really pleased that Mike is part of our Brains Behind the Brand series. So Mike is the MD, first and foremost, um, Hotel and Resorts Group, uh, Asset Group, Development and Operations. And Mike's background has spanned over 30 years. It's really key playing five-star hotels and F&B outlets. And as I call Mike, he is the man of veracity. From how many years ago was this, Mike? 25 years ago? Oh my God, I had to think of it how, how long ago it was, but certainly, yes, it, it started almost 25 years ago. And I think I left about 15. So Fantastic. A, lot of, a lot of water under the bridge since, since I left there. Yeah. But it's, it's, so, it's so nice to see it going. And it's, you know, it's one of those. Um, brands, destinations, which has got longevity. And, and if you can never build anything with longevity without having to spend a lot of money to keep it going, um, it's, a, it's a fantastic formula. Yeah. And yeah. obviously that, that has been one of them. Um, you know, obviously it's got the location, it's got Dubai, it's got so much going for it, being on the beach. Um, but it's also got a history and, and uh, certainly that was one of the, the success stories. Yeah, absolutely. And I think with, um, you know, with your background, uh, Mike, you know, where, you know, how many years you've been in the industry, I think that's one of the things is with collaborations and, for example, Brasti, um, it is a bit, a bit about longevity. It's not about quick and fast and uh, furious. It's more about what you can do with the space over certain chapters, over certain years. And I think the, I was reading up a couple of your articles from years ago, and there's one line, and it, it aligned with another line from Reed Hoffman. It was, the travel industry is a highly fragmented market. It's one liner. And then Reed Hoffman has put, no matter how brilliant your mind or strategy, if you're playing a solo game, you'll always lose out to the team. And I thought that's such a beautiful, like, it's literally one after another. And I saw it and went, wow, that's pretty incredible because from where I sit is there's lots of moving pieces but there's missed opportunities and I think the words in hospitality experience or authenticity or collaboration can be slightly overused or oversold as such but what's your take on it because I, I think we're going into this kind of collaboration economy but I'd really liked your take from someone with so much experience in the hospitality world? Well, look, I think that um, the, pro the problem with a lot in hospitality is that we when something gets an invented or, or created, and I'll use an example in a second, um, the, the rest of the industry jumps on it. And so um, it probably happens in, in all industries, but but let's take, for example, the, 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 the latest or the, the recent, one of the recent concepts, which is lifestyle. Yeah. We, we, we spoke about, we were talking about lifestyle and you know, we collaborated with, uh, with Thomas Cook um, two or three years ago um, with their, their lifestyle brands, Casa Cook and, and Cook's Club. And you, know, you, you mentioned the word authenticity and, and Cook's Club was all about natural authenticity lifestyle, music, entertainment, um, Z Gen, um, millennial, um, the younger crowd, the, 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 the in crowd. Um, and and you know, they, I believe that they really got that lifestyle right. And lifestyle started becoming a buzzword within the, in the hotel industry, a bit like the word boutique, you know, everything suddenly became boutique and now it's trading lifestyle. But lifestyle without being lifestyle, and um, this is this is a problem that that, that we've got, and, and it gets hijacked, you know, just only because it's a good marketing word, and the marketers um, hijack these words. So we've got to try and get around that to an extent where if you do if you do create something with in collaboration with 
a, a, a brand or, a, or in, in a lifestyle format. And it could, could be a clothing brand, it could be a shoe, a shoe brand, it could be a music brand, it could be a dating brand, it could be whatever brand that you happen to align yourself or collaborate with. That, that lifestyle and the authenticity of, of the product that you're giving it um, is, is, good to be, is key to, to attracting customers. You know? And um, I just feel that, that at, the, at the moment, we just got everyone jumping on. The moment something sounds good, something looks good, people are jump, jumping on, on, the, on the bandwagon. Yeah. And um, you know, I believe that people, sell, uh, that, that, um, people buy experiences that don't buy brands. But brands can sell experiences, if that makes sense. Yes. Well, that's, and, and that's key. From that question, Mike, there's something which came up where I've seen in the hospitality world, like where you go into a hotel or a restaurant, and there may be a bolt on, like a collaboration with another brand. But the brand itself, the hotel brand, does not own the experience. So they have some, they just say, look, go off and go into the desert, and that's fine but they don't own it end to end. So do you think there's a missing cog there? There's a big missing cog. And, and, and the big, the, the missing cog is, that, is, the, is generally, and I'm talking about you know, particularly the, the, the large hotels. We're not talking about the small independent hotel who's found themselves a niche and they're either a diving hotel or they're an adventure hotel or they're a mountain hotel or they're, you know, they're, a, they're, a, they're a Shiver Storm type, type spa, specialist spa destination hotel. They've got themselves the niche, they've got themselves the experience, and, and they've created a name around themselves. What's happened with the, the hotel industry, and this is something which the hotel industry really has to come, come to grips with now, is that they, in the sort of 80s, 90s, uh, you know, the first decade of the century, they, the hotels essentially were bed factories. And the, 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 the big groups, for whatever, per, for whatever reason at the time, decided that, okay, we, we're not specialists in anything besides, or we don't need anything besides the rooms because rooms is what makes the money and rooms are what make the money. I mean, that is where your big profit. And, and, and many of the, the contracts were, and I, you, if you read my articles, you, I kept on going on about this because I, I really felt passionately about it. I felt that, that the whole way management contracts had been designed, which was all about um, rewarding gross profit margin, gross profit profitability, pushed the, the rooms element of room because rooms are so much more profitable than F&B. So the moment you start bringing, you know, if, if, you, if you get rewarded by doing a GOP of 30% with an extra 2% of, on, 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 your, on your management fee, what are you gonna do? You're gonna cut out all the lifestyle expensive parts of running an operation. And this is, this is what happened. So. Yeah, the, the groups decided that what, what, what made a brand was look and smell. Yeah, that made the brand. Now, that's not what made the brand. And this is one of the reasons why Barasti and Mina Siyaki and various uh, and other projects that we certainly were involved with were so successful and that we, we didn't believe that, that the look made the brand or the smell made the brand, but the experience made the brand. And mm -hmm. this is really coming out now with the with the, with the millennials and the younger crowd. And this is where um, the, the, a lot of the groups have got to get their, their mindset out of or the, the hotel brands, the hotel industry has to get their mindset out of the fact that it's not a look and a smell. You know, it's an experience. And in order to, 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 to sell that experience, very often you need the collaboration of brands. And, you know, in today's world of social media and marketing and, and, um, yeah, you know, just the, the 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 way you know, your influencer world. I mean, you know, influence has got a bad word, but there are, is a place for influence, and you could even say that collaboration with brands they are your influencer in in, in that yeah. sense. Uh, and you know who you tie up with, and this is I think a, a lot about what today and, and what you're talking about is who do you tie up with to sell that experience that 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 you that you've got, but. Unless you can create that experience, unless you've got the expertise to create the experience, it's it's going to be a hiding to nothing for a lot of a lot of the big um, the, the hotel industry as such. Yeah. Um, you've got to just because the ethos isn't there, the the, the 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 accounting practices aren't there. So in other words, you know if you've got to create a, a fancy restaurant or a fancy bar, you know, your 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 payroll 
equivalent payroll system doesn't allow you to pay the person who could, you may have to pay more than the general manager in order to make a successful bar and club and that doesn't work and it's, it's not allowed, you know, and, and that's, that's a sort of, and that's something which the, the hotel industry has to come out of now. Yeah, have, well, I've noticed um, there's a few old ones, there's like the Hilton who collaborated and they created this thing called Live Nation, so it's like, you know, you go to music gigs at the Hilton, they're creating this experience, and then there's one in Seattle where they collaborated with um, like a camper, camper company, but rather than just saying, look, you know, come into Seattle and go off into the wilderness, they really created the experiences. So you have a different array of experiences with this camping company or camper van company. And they've called it something like Van to Glam, but it, they've made, they've owned the whole branded experience. Rather than just saying you can do this, they've really brought in all of these ideas. But it does lead me on to a question which, um, David Singleton um, had, had, had asked for it. It's a really key question about how you can maximise the space in hotels. So, you know, with what's going on, what kind of things could you be doing to increase the footfall? Um, you know, you've got these, all of these rooms, we've discussed the rooms, but what can you do to reimagine the space with collaborations in these types of, uh, we call them mega hotels, or you may call them something else, your expert uh, expert brains, but how can you really maximize the space at the moment with what's going on? You know, I think, okay, this is the million dollar question at the moment. And this is this is where, you know, no one really knows where the, where the industry is going. You know, if you, if you Bill Gates has, has forecast that the, the business world travel, business travel is going to, um, Four by fifty percent. Um, I think that to certain areas, um, it certainly will. I think it could could fall by 50, 60, 70 percent. Um, and so in some markets, in some areas, it's going to hardly be noticed. So it very much depends on where you are, uh, what the market is. Um, so you know, I think from from a, a real estate point of view, the the big pension companies, the big investors who have invested in these huge, um, you know, 200, 300, 400 room hotels and city centres, particularly, um, they they've got something, they've got some serious uh, thought process to go. And you know, you can't say, oh well, you know, I'm going to put a, a a club in there or a nightclub or something because that'll only take you know one tiny percentage of of all the floor space that you've got you've got. Um, available so you know there's 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 so much talk about starting to 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 link in with um uh, you know real estate companies you know, selling rooms off maybe more long term for for people who want to come into into the cities and work three four days a week um you know, you know business um, office sharing office space and um, allowing businesses who who um what do you know, allow people to work at home for two or three days a week, but bringing a lot more people in for, for the other two days, they are going to need to have space to do that. And it's not worth their while to, to permanently have the amount of space to do it. And, you know, there's a lot of talk that in, in, in the new COVID world and the, the, the amount of um, distance you have and the amount of um, space you need per person is going to, to multiply um, significantly. That's going to hope may offer uh, give a give a, a space demand for for hotels. So I think, and um, besides sort of smaller smaller issues, for, we're talking about other big companies, a big real estate. And um, I I think you know, personally, if I was running any of those um, right now, I'd possibly be looking at, at office um, sharing and creating uh, space for for. Um, office workers, part-time workers, and um, doing more deals for, for long-term stays, maybe you know, three days a week for a year. So you know that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, some guy's gonna come in or lady's gonna come in and they're gonna take that, that room. So you give them a, a package deal for the year, which is advantageous for them and, and, and cheaper than staying in a, in a, in a um, Airbnb or in, in, um, in a part hotel. Because remember, you've just got, you, you, what happened in the last couple of years, you just had this huge, huge amount of extra uh, capacity coming onto the market. And this is something which everyone has to deal with. And um, you know, one of your disruptors that, that, that 
everyone talks about is Airbnb, and it, and it is a serious disruptor into into the business. Now, it, it, you never really noticed it because travel had had was just going so 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 well. You know, everyone was flying everywhere with millions of planes all over the sky. You know, now we're sitting in a situation where all the old planes have gone. No one really knows which routes are going to become you know, the, the big routes, what sort of capacity there is going to be. Um, I'd imagine that your, your transatlantic route is going to come back to close to what it was. Um, you know, we don't, we don't know which planes, you know, all the old 747s which were doing the, the Latin American market or the, or the um, Caribbean market, where, which planes are going to take over and do those now. So suddenly you don't have the same capacity that you had on, on, on Lyft. And I believe that certainly Lyft is going to be um, one of the biggest criteria of, of any one in the tourist industry. You know, how many seats have you got to do it? So that sort of leads you back into the domestic markets. And we've seen the domestic market, which is, which is really sort of everyone's banking on that now, particularly in the UK. And um, you know, like the, the, the UAE, from what I understand, recent you know, over this period has, has done very well out of the, the domestic market. And that is the only market they had. And the UK market had no market because there was no travel. Um, and now we're just waiting on, this, on the 17th of June to, to what we hope is going to be a very, very strong domestic market. And, you know, you've suddenly got, you, you now have to appeal to that. You know, so we've got a, a hotel which is on the, in the Yorkshire Dales and we've just now relaunched, uh, we're re relaunching uh, uh, the restaurant and we're creating the, the Skipton Bar and Grill. And just to start really trying to attract the local community, you know, before it was a, it's a hundred room hotel and, and it was really geared to, to the traveling market, the coaching market. You know, we're now going to take it right out of that market and, and look at, at, at the local market as well as um, the travel from around the UK and international, obviously, when it comes back again. So you just got to, it, it just depends on which market you're going for and, and what, you're, what you believe to be the new situations to who you then tie in with and collaborate with in order to try and um, fill, your, fill your product. Yeah, and I think with that, on that note, on Airbnb, there's actually, I was doing some, uh, some case studies on them. So they used to have the live there, live there campaign where you could go and stay in and go and drink a glass of wine in a Parisian and kind of feel the, you know, where you're living. And I started doing um, the go near, uh, the go near campaign. So it's collaborating with all of the brands and uh, people in the local domestic markets and creating experiences, but also offering a platform and insights and trends to help these brands. So they're doing so much, but the return is these experiences, you know, all of these brands coming together. And I think that goes on to a question which um, Jennifer Pettinger Haynes, who's a MD of uh, Bench Events, she asked the question around. When you look at collaborations, and a lot of people ask this, we also had Omar at Boca asked it as well, Boca Restaurants. What do you personally look at from a collaboration? Is it straight away financial return? Or is it marketing and awareness? Or does each collaboration differ based on your wants and needs at the time? Everything, it's... There's a multitude of, of, of factors that go into collaboration. I mean, obviously, your, your end result is, is bottom line and profit. And how, you, how you're achieving that, are you achieving it by awareness? Are you achieving it by, by linking with someone and, and that gives your, your product more authenticity? Is it a product that, you, that you've got a new market segment, a new age group that you want to go into? So you're using that collaboration to, uh, to attract a new market, to go into it. I mean, in, in, in any of the collaborations that we were, we've done in, in the past, you know, there has to be a win-win. There's no, there's no such thing as um, a, a not. You know, even if, a, if, a, if, if one of the companies you go into are purely doing it for, um, you know, for, for financial gain themselves, it's a win for them. But, and you're using it to, to, to gain their database or to, to, gain in, to get into their market share or to get into their market into a certain age group. So there's no one reason why you do it. Um, there, there's a number of reasons why, and uh, everyone has got their own. I mean, you only have to look at the um, airline industries when they created the, 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 the One Worlds, you know, and, and the, they all collaborated in order to, to, to feed each other and feed off each other. And 
you know, I think 80% of all, all flights are, are, are involved and um, STEM are, are involved in the two or three main conglomerates and, and groups. And, um, you know, that's what the airline industry ha ha has done. Um, the hotel industry is more difficult. Obviously, we um, link in with tour operators. We link in with, with suppliers of, of, of rooms in different ways. We've all been you know, subject to the, the OTAs, you know, who, who, who effectively, you know, push every single hotel in your region on the same platform. And it's just how clever you are at marketing a certain rate at a certain time with whatever add-ons and, and whatever experience that you can give. And, uh, you know, then, then you've got the, obviously your groups who, who uh, you know, rely on, on, on loyalty. And, you know, loyalty is, is collaboration to an extent in, in whatever loyalty program you have to, to, drive, to drive your business. Yeah. Um, but if, if you're suddenly finding, which you could do now, that, that most, of your, you know, most of your business customers are, are loyalty-based customers. Um, your, your leisure customers are very experience-based customers and, uh, and, and in some cases are using points, but you know, let's keep them out of, out of that at this stage because they, they've almost got a, they know where they want to go, or why they want to go somewhere because of, 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 their, of their, their loyalty. And, and so they're, they're difficult to attract <clears throat> to, to an extent. So we're really looking at the open market where you know someone's got flexibility to travel. Yes, yeah. Um, and, <clears throat> you know, obviously, as I say, your OTAs were, were very, very powerful. Um, almost, they, they were almost too powerful. Um, and then, um, but, you know, we were getting 40% of our rooms in some cases from them. Now, mm -hmm. again, it, it, depending whether you're business or, or, or leisure. Um, and then uh, you know, our collaboration with, with all the different uh, tour operators. And um, you know, the tour operator as such now is becoming, is going down. And we've been finding that this, the high street tour operator in the UK, um, they, they're just about gone, particularly after COVID. You know, there was a, there was a bit of a resurgence um, just before COVID and they, 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 they seem to be buying each other out and, and sort of resurrecting the high street. And it looks like, I think that's what just about gone. So, it's all going to be about algorithms and online and Google marketing and Google paying and exposure and, and collaboration with whichever, whichever brands you can in order to get to the, your message out. And uh, yeah, as, as with um, any of the, the, the online travel agents, uh, it's, a, it's a cost and you've just got to try and yeah, if you can sell at the right price and incorporate the, that, that cost, you're fine. If, you're, if you can't, you're going to be on on a on a on a fine line as to what profitability you're going to be making. Yeah, yeah. And do you think, with regards to the industry itself, it used to be. I remember speaking to one particular Michelin chef, and he, when I spoke about collaboration, he was adamant. He said, "You'll never get chefs collaborating." Well, a question I, which is coming up is from CEO of uh, Gates Name, and um, they've they've nailed it. They've had lots of chefs collaborating, but can you see the future is collaborating with competition as well so you've got the outside your industry collaborations which are people who are non-threatening as such in in that world but you've also got collaborations with your nearest and dearest but where you could all benefit do you think that will happen or do you think when things are calmed down it will go back to them and us um oh it, it, again, you know, I, I keep on saying this, but it, it just depends on the situation, where, when, and how. You know, it, it's such a difficult uh, model. There will be collaboration in that. You know, we find that uh, you know, if, if you suddenly, if you get a concert coming into town, everyone collaborates with with rooms, and you know, because there's a demand for it. If you've got big exhibitions coming into town, we, you know, there's collaboration which goes mm -hmm. on, and sometimes you know, people will will price you know, equivalently just to to make it attractive to and bring people to the destination and the city and so um you know the, the 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 cruise industry collaborates with the hotel industry on on land you know because people will stop for a night before they go so there is tremendous amount of collaboration within the the the, in, the industry and um, you know it, you know probably one of the biggest forms of collaboration that that we see now is the franchise industry you know and you can see your your big your big groups your echoes your your um, Hilton's, they, you know, they are, and the Marriott particularly, 
they are collaborating and, and, and offering franchises to individual hotels and individual people just to get them on their booking system. And, um, you know, it's going to be interesting to see whether these franchises now are worth their while. Obviously, you know, in, before they could have been, and particularly when you start look at, looking at the loyalty schemes and, and things, they, they cost a lot to, to have a, a, a franchise of this nature. Um, but they also give you tremendous exposure. Now, you know, d your destination, I've always believed that, you know, with all the years I was working in Dubai, that, that no one needed a brand in Dubai. Dubai sold Dubai. You, you actually didn't need to have a brand. Now, obviously, the destination wants brands because that, that shows and that gives authenticity to the city and the destination. So there's a very good reason why you do it. But in pure business terms, in most cases, you, you really didn't need brands because it, it was. Whereas marginal destinations desperately need it. And you know, in, in city centers, you, you, know, you need the, 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 the marketing and the expertise of, of, the, of, the, of the brands and the, and the, and the groups. Um, so now what you found is that everyone or so many properties have now tied in to a name of some sort. It's going to be really interesting. And I don't, I, I, they could have done exactly, it could be the right thing to be in right now, could be the wrong thing to be in. And um, on the basis that, that, you know, you've got a very high cost and that cost could be going into, into creating an experience or creating a thing which would have sold, sold itself. And, you know, we, we have to accept that in today's world, there are a lot more avenues of marketing than necessarily through other third parties. Yes, absolutely. And the one thing which uh, Nay modded up, who's CEO of Gates, and he asked a good question, but I do see this a lot actually, because put, typically the collaboration initi initiator is the party that wins the most uh, collaborations, both financially and so, um, so social media, et cetera. How can the collaborating party, uh, the host collaborating party, benefit and have justified returns? Now, my view is, I can see what he's saying there, but uh, I mean, I think it's all about structure of collaborations, but what's your take on that? Oh, uh, um, it could be any, you know, the, the, it depends on the product, depends on place, depends where it is, you know. And if you can get, if you can get a big enough name, if you're going for a younger market, you know, and we know, for example, that the millennial market, you know, Nike, Jordan, Adidas, and um, North, North Face, and um, Supreme, you know, these are, these are brands which the youth are associating with. You know, you, ha you have to look at, um, you know, who, who are they all listening to? You know, Billie Eilish. You know, what is Billie Eilish? Who is Billie Eilish? You know, she's, she's, she's a, 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 she does her own music. She's authentic. You know, I've got four daughters, and so I know what what they what they're looking at. I know what they what they're listening to. They tell me what what they are, and you know, she I believe is 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 what the the the, the youthful marketing or, or group are looking for now. She's she's non sexualized. You know, she she wears baggy clothes. She has coloured hair. She's she comes across as being authentic. Um, and I think, and, and when I look at, when I look at her and, and if you go into, and you see any of her, the YouTube, you know, she has 240, 250 million people who are watching her videos. You know, that's the type of power that someone like, like her has got. But, but what I'm really saying is that, that, that it's, it's an authentic, natural, look that people are looking for now. So, you know, I was going on earlier on about it, and because we're, we're, we're really looking at style, and I was talking about the Casa Cook style. And now, Casa Cook, you know, two, three, four years ago, and we're still busy working with it now through, through the new owners and, and, and um, a Chinese group, which, which actually brought Thomas Cook out and brought the brands out. It's an authentic uh, brand, and, and the kids are, are, and, and the young crowd now, who you really want to do, because they're the, they're the new lifestylers, the millennials and the, the Gen Z, they are, they are your last. And this is who you really got to attract if you want to attract um, the, the crowds and the, and the, the in crowd as such. You know, you'll always have um, you know, your, your resort where you're going for the, for, the, for the older crowd and the baby boomers. And, and you know, they are and, you know, they're different chefs who I would be collaborating with them. And there's different products I would be in. You know, the old La Creuset and, the, and there's other cooking brands and, and uh, 
you know, um, some of the uh, some of the well-known TV chefs that we know. Um, you know, these are the sort of people that we would with Nigella you know, Lawson. You know, these are the type of people who you would be associating with in the culinary terms. And then you've got now, now you've got the modern the modern crowd, and um, you know the pop culture crowd. And so, if I was going in, in that type of environment, and Dubai is very much that environment. And let's face it; I mean, that is that is your your modern Londoners, Parisers. Yeah, this is these are the people who are going into your clubs and going into your thing, and they are the new travellers. Uh, and you've got to attract these people. And, and that's the, the collaboration that you've got to do is you've got to go in with these brands. But what the point I was going to make was that it's all very well you saying that, that, that we are about look and smell. Okay. But then you go and you try and collaborate with a, a group who, and the, the younger crowd who are looking for authenticity. They're looking for naturalness. They're, they're not looking for, um, you know, something that all looks the same. They wanted to be adapted to it. They, they want, a, they, they want a, um, a genuine experience. And this is where the product has to change now to fit in with the, the, the new adapting market. Yeah. And um, you know, a, lot of, a lot of groups have, are so embedded in this, in, in the brand, in the old brand. And, and what they were doing at the time was right. Don't get me wrong. I'm not. I mean, there's certain I had reservations about it only because I'm a bit of a maverick and I like to be out there and 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 create experiences more than I've always been a, a, a believe in experience as opposed to to look and feel. Yeah, you know? and you have to have the right look and feel with an experience, but you know, it goes in, all in all. So yes, yeah, so that's that's really where we where we go with that. Yeah, yeah, and I think that it's so true. That's why you are so renowned though, Mike, because you are a maverick in terms of experience and you will spot things. You know, I was speaking to a millennial last week about a collaboration with, it was National Geographic and Coors Beer. So they had two explorers, they all collaborated, they went on a trip and this millennial just said, why is there not a hotel brand involved and a couple of really cool chefs, who were chefs come trekking with us and tell us to cook in the mountains. And it was just like, I didn't even think of that. What a, what a cool concept where you bring in brands together. And again, it's just that extra, you know, at the end of a trip, you stay at the hotel and you come up with some ideas. But I think the um, one other person came across and they said, you know, they're working for this uh, multinational hotel and restaurant chain. And there is buckets of pushback from top level saying, just do what we've always done. And to do an authentic theme in the restaurant has been pushed back. To do a lifestyle experience has been a pushback. But it's a strong brand. Now, what's your tip from being an ex, you know, one of those top dogs where people would come up with these ideas? What's your tip in terms of not manipulating, but um, showcasing the absolute benefits and the necessity of doing this moving forward? Okay, I think you you've got to you've got to show examples, and you know we're in partnership with a with a a, a group called Levit Levit in in Dubai, and um, I think most of you would know the Cove Beach Club. Yes, yes, I did it Beach earlier. Which just opened up. Now uh, they are probably your best example, and and a couple of you know we we started with them a long time ago. We're building three hotels in Ethiopia with them, and and they um. You know, and you're finding a, a couple of the fairly uh, more adventurous brands who, who I have a lot of respect for, leisure brands. Um, they, they came from the East and they've now sort of infiltrated into the Dubai market, very forward thinking. And they've now partnered with Livet on the basis of um, understanding that you need that kind of, of expertise in. And I think that if, if anyone's struggling, you know, uh, uh, this is what I was saying a little bit earlier about uh, uh, some of the big companies, they're so entrenched in their ideas and they're probably not convinced yet that there's a new market out there that ha they have to drastically change because they, everyone is, is, you know, they've employed people for the last 20 years with that mindset. So everyone, the culture is in that mindset, which is the, is the old mindset. So it's not easy just to change it. And the problem is the bigger you are, the more difficult it is to change a mindset or to change a culture on the basis that there's too many people who've been hammering that in. So you almost have to collaborate to bring this in. And, you know, their management could well be looking at, the, at their resources, whoever, and saying, well, 
yes, maybe we believe that that's the way we should be going, but we don't believe that our resources are capable. You know, we're not paying a bit, what I say earlier, they're not necessarily paying the coolest DJ, or they're not paying the, the coolest restaurant manager, or they're not paying the coolest chef at, of, of the day, which is all part of that, that culture, you know, and you have to do that in order to do it. So, you know, you could have to spend a lot of money on trying to change something, but if you haven't got the resources and your staff aren't able to do it, maybe the decision from the from from the, the top guys is right, you know. And yeah. um, you know, so it all has to fit together. And I think when you when you start looking at collab collaboration, you know, and you start going to the big brands, they're not going to jump into bed with every top and Dick and Harry on the basis that they to try and get their brand out there. Because if you don't fit their brand, they don't want to be associated with you. Yes, you know, yes. So, it has to be justified, and it has to be a... you know, yeah. So you know, they're, they're, you're the big athleisure groups now, which are, you know, your Nike Puma, and they're, and they're going into the athletic leisure market, which is, which is a huge market, and you know, they're billions, they're, their revenues are billions. Of now, obviously, with the high street suffering, they're going to be looking for avenues to partner with people. But it doesn't fit to partner with a, a business hotel where it's all marble, all air, uh, wrong clientele, no, 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 you know, no, no spark, no fire, no things. So they're going to be looking for opportunities. So, you know, the big groups have now got to be changing their product. They've got to be, they've got to be gearing themselves to be attractive to this, the, you know, this this type of of, of collaboration, this type of of, of market. And um, you know, your 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 um, your gaming market is is a huge, huge market. This this. Like e sports, yeah. e -game, you know, gaming. You know, these guys, they're, they're, they're 50% of all internet users have done some form of gaming. And, you know, so you know, if, if I was, if I was you know, in a big city hotel at the moment, boy, and, we, and we're actually looking at, for, at it with our Skipton property, we've been looking at it for a while now, is to see how we can attract the gaming market. You know, can we have gaming rooms? Can we have gaming events? You know, you only have to look at, at, at how popular the darts these yes. huge darts events are going all around the country now you could be doing having gamers shooting out against each other in in rooms with 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 crowds of people all cheering on and you know that's a this is what we're looking at now as, as, a, as a possibility to go and and making gaming a real crowd entertainment thing so if you've got big rooms you know that's the type of thing and then obviously you know, the online, you've got millions of people going online, so they see your brand, and while they're seeing your brand, they see your beach, and they see your nice... Yeah. So, so that, that, to me, is a, is a big opportunity at the moment, and, and that's, that's where we're looking at going, and I would certainly be doing that if we, were, if we had a property in Dubai. Absolutely, and also the experience. You know, I look at hotels, restaurants, and you see stock photos or imagery, but you don't feel the walking down the steps to the beach or the 3D of the restaurant and all of the, you know, the tech firms are doing this kind of reality where they're walking into this. So you could be having a gaming collaboration, but you actually, but you can also go online and walk into it it's as if you were part of it. And there's some incredible things happening. And that's really where the kind of world is going. But the final thing, Mike, is, and this is for all of the brands who, are the, what I call the next generation of brands. They are your artists. They are your um, interior designers. They're the ones who are gonna be the next best thing. They are next molten brands. And I have so many which have successes with boutique because they can get hold of the GMs, etc. But, you know, they want to, you know, know more about, you know, how to, pitch correctly to the likes of you and I know that well let, let's talk about the collaboration with Pop and Toast so we spoke about uh, an idea around a collaboration with an artist we we helped you with Pop and Toast but why did you go down that avenue and what made your ears prick up about that artist in particular because I think it's good for the we've got some artists on here and I think it's very good for them to hear from the man himself so yeah so we um I've been looking at that that retro art thing for a while now, and and again, it's trying to find a, a way to market yourself. You know, what do you put out? What do you put out which which makes you stand out as a destination? And obviously, we wanted to create 
a, a, an advert which showed, and you know, because we recently, in the last six months, we've taken over the hotel and we, we're transforming the, the client mix, we're transforming every aspect of, of, of the, the hotel and, and where we're going. And um, we want to, we, we've, if you go onto our new website, the Hotel Rendezvous, you'll see we're, 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 we've, we've, we're a destination, we're selling the destination, we're not selling the hotel, okay? So it's a destination, and then obviously if, you, if we can sell the destination, you'll come and stay with us. Now obviously anyone who has, has gone online and wants to book a hotel in Skipton or, or, or and go to the New Yorkshire Dales or go to North Yorkshire, we're going to appear anyway because of, of, of advertising and, and the, the stuff. But, but essentially, we're, a, we're, a, we're a, a destination. Just like if you're a resort, you sell your, your beach. You know? So we're in the middle of the Yorkshire Dales, so we're selling the, the Yorkshire Dales. And the same, same thing as a, leisure, as a leisure hotel. So we needed, a, we needed a, an advert to, to show all the facilities and all the fantastic historical sites. I mean, you know, you, you, you really have got history in that area besides the beauty of the Dales. And, and that's what we needed. And, and who better to, to portray this into a, into a, 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 a retro art um, uh, image? And, and, that's what, and that's how we got involved. And that's, that's what we've done. And that's gone over. And we've had tremendous responses. Tremendous. Because yeah. People love it. It tells a story. It's artistic. It's created it. And um, yeah, we, we're going to now extend that into into other aspects of of, of of our marketing. Yeah, no, it's great. And also, I mean, I've been looking at the Utopia um, Hotel in Ethiopia. So, has it actually opened yet? Is that... No, we're uh, we're looking at September at the moment. Yeah, I mean, that looks absolutely incredible. The amount of beautiful things you could be doing with that is going to be absolutely phenomenal. So, um, so that's yeah, great. Well, yeah, we've got a yeah, we've got coffee because um, you know the owner is a is a is is is, is uh, runs all the plantations in in Ethiopia. So, you know, here we're we're taking over his hotel and 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 um, we're going to create a bit of a, a again a sort of retro coffee a coffee theme to it, and uh, it just lends itself to a story. And and people like stories. People buy stories. The story has to be authentic and um, it has to be natural. It has to be attractive to the new world of, 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 of purchases that we've been talking about the, the whole time. Um, and so, yeah, that's where we're going with that. Oh, it's stunning. It's stunning. Um, Mike, thank you so much for your time. We've run over slightly, so sorry about that. But I think your experience in, in this market is absolutely phenomenal. So being able to go through hospitality as a whole and, and where it's going and, and just having your outlook and and ideas and i think the gaming concept is fantastic and i think anyone who's watching this they steal your idea you might have to charge them <laughs> we'll help them we'll help them that's what we're here for <laughs> <laughs> brilliant well thank you so much mike and um i will be in yeah, touch again soon we'll be posting this um in the next uh, week or so so thank you very much okay pleasure Good. Uh, take care bye-bye okay.